Well, um, we are continuing. Um, the next one is uh, the presentation of uh, Pyramid. Pyramid is a geospatial software developer since more than five, 15 years. He has contributed to JDAL, QGIS, T-Rex, and several other projects. Uh, Pyramid is and co-founder of SourcePol, uh, a Swiss company providing these services and solutions. Uh, so we we are mm, we welcome uh, to Pyramid, and we are going to to start uh, your presentation. Um, just one second, and here we go. But also WebJS and other OS. Welcome to my talk about game engines and using it for 3D geospatial development. My name is Pirmi Kalberer. I work for SourcePol, located in Zurich. We are doing development, software development for QGIS, but also WebGIS and other OSGO projects. Let's look first at the typical 3D viewer in the web. So that's a typical city view in a web browser. And let's, let's compare that to modern games running on a PC. First game is also playing in a city. It's doing real time rendering of city with uh, moving cars uh, and you can freely move within the city and it's streamed and rendered online. The next game is about rendering landscapes. So the story is in Viking times. Here you see a nice tree wood rendering, night landscapes, water, and so on. Then a classical game, a Flight Simulator. That's the new edition of the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Also, city display, city rendering, here from high above, and looking into the city. So this was a comparison with uh, recent games, which is not fair in, in many senses. But the question of this talk is, how could we use this game engine technology? A few years ago, game engines started to pop up that these game studios published their engine. And here is a collection of important game engines. The number one is the Unreal Engine from Epic Games. Um, it's free to use, but you pay royalty after 1 million cross revenue. The second one is Unity, um, which is free for personal use and then has license per seat and you pay per year for commercial games. And the third one is an open source engine Godot. It's community based but also has funded developers. So currently about 10. Um, it has about 20,000 daily active users, 1 to 2 million installations, more than 5,000 games on each I.O., 1,300 contributors, 30 core developers. So it's quite a big project. Godot has a graphical user interface for 2D and 3D, but also 
text editors for programming. Uh, it runs on Linux, Mac OS and Windows. It's a tiny binary. It's based on, on nodes and scenes. Supports 2D and 3D, has an animation system and is programmable either in a built-in scripting language, which is similar to Python, or with GD native, you can program in C sharp or C++ and others. And it has also a visual scripting interface. It has logging, debugging, profiling. It has XR support. It exports to several platforms. So again, Linux, Mac, Windows, but also Android and iPhone, and also Wasm exports for the web browser. I prepared a demo to show how Godot looks and how it is working with Godot. I start with a basic cube scene with a camera. Here is the preview of the camera. And when I, I can play this scene, not much happens, so it's a cube. With the background and what I want to do next, I want to add physics to this cube. So I change the node type uh, from the regular nodes to a rigid body. And then it warns me that I need a collision shape. So I add one. Well, I have to add, create a box shape and then set the size of the box. And now I have a collision and physics of a cube. So what happens now? It falls down quite slowly. So I want to make it a little bit more dynamic. I increase the mass or the weight of the cube, increase the gravity and set the initial speed. So it's falling quicker. So that's my cube. And now I want to have a Tira. There's an interesting website for that, Elevation API, where you can uh, extract parts of a DEM and add OpenStreetMap data. So here I also set the imagery, OSM settings, buildings and roads, and extract it as GLTF. That's a scene format. So I have this scene already here, this folder, I open it and the scene gets imported. Consists of multiple layers. One is this road layer, another one the building layer and the terrain layer with the aerial imagery on it. It's a mesh layer and what I have to do first is I have to uh, reduce the size and here I have to add some more view in Z direction and now I can start uh, adapting the style. I add a material for the roads, simple color setting, that's for the roads and the same for the building layer, I add a material and set the, the base color. So I save the scene. And 
The next step is adding the scene to the main scene. So that's the scene with the cube and the camera. And here it's combined. And I have also the adapter to view settings. And now let's see what happens. Oh, the cube is falling and it's falling into the terrain. I show it again. So what we need now is to add a collision shape for the terrain. And in the mesh options, I have uh, possibilities to adding a collision shape uh, or creating one. You see the lines and the viewer. I collect this collision shape into a node. Have a better organization. I use a static body and then I can collapse and hide it. So now we run the scene again and we see a physical reaction of the cube. So that's all made without any code. That's just the physics engine of Godot. And the last step, I want to add some code. I attach a script, create a new script. That's scripting language of Godot, which looks similar to Python. I start with a constant, which is the initial scene, uh, load, which is loaded here. That's this cube scene, so essentially the cube. And then I write a function for keyboard input. I have to catch events, uh, user events. And if, if it's a key press, the space key pressed, I call this function throw cube, which I write right now. So that's the main function. I create a new box variable, which is an instance of this cube scene. So I create a new instance and add this instance to the current scene. That's the whole script. And now let's see how it works. So it's falling down. Now press space and new cubes appear. And roll down independently. So this was the Godot demo. You saw there was different terminology in this game engine. So when we speak about raster data in in GIS, that's usually sprites or textures. Vector data are meshes in different formats. Point clouds, all the meshes or 3D tiles. Styling is usually done as material with textures or other parameters. And we have containers, scenes, one of the uh, scene formats is GLTF we used here. The next slide is about OGC standards in the area of 3D. So there's CityGML and latest one CityJSON, which are an OGC standard. And then we have two community standards. The first one from ESRI is the index 3D scene layer. And the other one are three D tiles from Cesium. They have similar capabilities. Three D tiles is more based on GLTF, but it's yeah, it's about models, models, buildings, points, and so on. Uh, this GLTF 
scene format is maintained by the Kronos group. And the question now is, how do you build such a detailed 3D model? And the main software in this area is Blender, which is one of the best tools for creating 3D art. And in comparison to Godot, um, Blender is made for scene creation. It has sculpting and other creation tools. It has high quality rendering. So it's not uncommon to render for uh, days for one scene to have the best available quality. There are animation tools. And usually the final product is an image or a video animation. And Godot is made to be programmable for interactive scenes, interactive applications. It's well suited for XR applications, has runtimes for multiple platforms, desktop, mobile and web. And the final product is an interactive application. Most of these things can also be done uh, by Blender, but Godot is made for that. And here are some activities on the GIS side. So Esri has published uh, ArcGIS Maps SDK for Unity and for Unreal last autumn and Cesium has published Cesium for Unreal this year. So there are two major companies or two major products uh, for game engines, bringing JS data into game engines. And on OGC side, there is currently a revision of the E3S community standard and an RFC of city GML 3.0. And there are also other activities like sprints in this area. What could be done or what, what is available for using GIS data in Godot? There is this elevation API. I just used in the demo, which has a web application, but is also standalone. Terra and OSM data, as we saw. And the second one is the hate map TRI plugin, which optimizes meshes from DEMs. And it has advanced shaders for surfaces, grass shaders, rock shaders, and so on. And that's a available as a open source plugin for Blender. Then there is another plugin called Geodot, which is based on GDAL and imports Geodata into Godot. Also an open source plugin and is used for instance, for this landscape lab application where you can place objects in a landscape and see it uh, rendered in 3D. What could be done in this area in the future? A few ideas. For Godot, there are many interesting formats are not supported yet. Uh, Flat Geobuff is interesting, Cogdiff, uh, GeoPackage, but also 3D tile support, I would wish for Godot. And CAD formats, uh, BIM formats would be interesting. There is a BIM plugin for Blender but it would be interesting to have a direct import into Godot as well. Then another idea would be a good city GML converter, which 
directly creates scenes usable in Godot. And a dream of me would also be a 3D preparation pipeline using OSM data. There are many scattered projects, but the common 3D OSM pipeline would be very interesting. And there is a different area procedural city modeling, which could be interesting. And also exchanging textures, models, and so on. So a platform for um, sharing models in this area would be uh, interesting. So what are the applications? We saw a few of them, landscape planning, city planning, transport planning, but also indoor navigation or outdoor navigation, especially with augmented reality. You, can, you could display historical data in 3D and you could, GIS, you could do GIS with uh, virtual, uh, virtual reality user interaction. GIS functional, functionality like measurement, shadow analysis, visibility analysis with augmented reality or virtual reality or simply GPU-based GIS calculations, which could improve uh, performance a lot. So this was my short introduction into game engines and its use with GIS data. Thank you.